I don't know about you, but we're still shaking, as is the Earth, of course. And so it's with pleasure that I welcome earthquake geologist uh, Pila Villamore with GNS Science, of course, who has been down here ever since this uh, earthquake happened in the weekend. Thank you for joining me, particularly this morning. Thanks for inviting me. It's lovely that you could come in. Now, can we just kind of reiterate what happens scientifically or why do we have an earthquake? When we feel that sensation, what's going on? Uh, what happens is that the Earth is um, subjected to a lot of stress, uh, usually because we live on a, a boundary between two tectonic plates. The mm -hmm. Australian plate and the Pacific plate are colliding. So that produces a lot of stress in the Earth. And sometimes the Earth cannot hold it for longer and it ruptures through lines that are weak. So there are planes that are weak. So that rupture releases a lot of energy and that's what produces the shaking, it produces the earthquake. So the earthquake is that release of energy because the ground is cracking, right. let's say. Okay. Now, the, the earthquake that happened early on the hours of Saturday morning, that was with a previously unknown fault, wasn't it? We didn't really know about this no, before. No, we didn't know about it. Um, we've been trying to map all the active faults of the country, um, different groups, you know, University of Canterbury, GNS Science, other universities, and and it's not always easy to find all the faults, but we are still quite um, confused because this particular fault, we still haven't found any signs that was, that we should have, it should have warned us that it was there. Uh, we've been looking at, you know, at the tra uh, walking along the trace these days to map what has happened, but also looking for evidence if something else has ha was there previously. We haven't found any signs. Uh, some of our colleagues in the office have been looking at seismic reflection lines, which is like an X-ray of mm -hmm. the ground, and they haven't found any signs that we sh it should have warned us that there was an active fault there. So this is totally a shock for us. And of course, you know, we cannot know all the active faults of the country. It's a big country. There are a lot of active faults, and we are very, very few scientists. Mm. So it's very difficult to cover all the ground, but this was not this typical obvious one that would have just picked up like that from looking at aerial photographs or another techniques that mm, we use. Mm. So um, it really was a playing, doing very well at playing hide and seek, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. So they say that it might have been there for 16,000 years, is that right? Did I read that correctly well, somewhere? Well, what happens is that the, the big sort of extensive terrace where all the farms are, it's a terrace that was built 16,000 years ago right? Um, by big rivers, fans coming from the mountains. Um, after that, the, the climate changed and there was not, so there was a lot of vegetation growing and the rivers start incising where they are now. So that terrace was abandoned. And usually what happens is when that terrace is abandoned and there's a fault line running through it, as the fault moves, it accumulates displacement. So let's say, one, one, one event will cause four meters of displacement, which is what we're finding in the ground these days. Uh, if, you, if that terrace has suffered three, four, five, you will have uh, rivers that are upset by 16 meters, 20 meters, and that's sort of the signs that tell us that that has been going on from right. that fault line. Right. But because there is no signs that anything like that had happened before, what we suspect is that this fault at least hasn't ruptured in 16,000 years. Okay, so that's how we kind of get those guidelines. Mm. It's been a big wake-up call really, hasn't it? And given the fact that there are so many aftershocks, including that big one this morning, can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that one that shook us at about 10 to 8? Yeah, we were very, it, it was quite strong in Rickerton Road where mm. we are accommodated. Yes. <laughs> we had a bit of a shake, yeah. Um, it is common, you know, I think it was a 5.1 at the end. We were. All the scientists were betting what, how, how big it was. <laughs> um, there were some sixes being set there, yeah. but no, I mean, um, the, it's common. Uh, the, the Earth is still settling down. Uh, it's, it's releasing still some energy, but it's usually common to have aftershocks, but not, again, a major mm, shock. Mm. And in fact, in scientific terms, we call this a uh, main shock aftershock sequence of earthquakes, which means that you have a big one first and then you know, some are medium-sized ones, a lot of small ones tapering off mm. in a few weeks' time. So. so how long will we be experiencing aftershocks and, and tremors? Is it something that we really don't know? Well, there are studies in the world and they are, <coughs> excuse me, they are, um, it's common that they last for at least a few weeks mm, mm. after the... So we can, <laughs> we can still kind of expect some in a, in a, in a few weeks' sure, time. Sure, sure.
I mean, you will be having a couple of weeks with common mm. aftershocks mm. for sure, and mm. then less. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for popping in, Philomera. It's been lovely to meet you. Thanks and I know me. all of the scientists that are here at the moment doing a fabulous job so that we can gain more awareness. Can so. I say a couple of words? Yes. I want to thank the farmers for letting us work in their land. Mm. They are very distressed, and we really appreciate that this is a pressure for them, but they were really generous and also the University of Canterbury staff and, and students, they are leaving their families behind to do this work and the families have been very really generous to let us have them. So I think it's just been amazing really. Thank you very much, Panama. Lovely yeah. to meet you.